Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, Open Daylight, Open Stack, State of the World um, session. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, first thing here is my colleague, uh, Kyle, who, as you may know, is, uh, was ele recently elected uh, Neutron PTL, is not going to be here, mostly because he vastly underestimated the amount of work being Neutron PTL would be, and he's off doing other things. So uh, uh, cut Kyle a break on that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just dive into this. Oh, let me, let me just say who I am. I'm Dave Meyer. Um, I work at Brocade. Um, I'm currently chair of the Open Daylight TSC, Technical Steering Committee. And um, this talk is kind of about what we've learned, what we did over the last year in Open Daylight, what kind of things we learned, and what the future, what we're going to do going forward. So, as a um, as a kind of a, a way that to run this is, if you have a question or anything, just you know, anytime, let's we can do it in line and just get up and stop me. So, with that, let's see. So, what is it? I mean, there's how many people have heard of Open Daylight? Oh, wow, OK. Good. Good marketing. Where's the Linux Foundation? Excellent. Um, uh, I had some personal learnings. Uh, actually, Open Daylight, I, I, you know, I'd written a lot of code and put it on GitHub and stuff like that, but I'd never really been in one of these really large-scale uh, open source projects. So I learned a few things, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of tell you uh, what those were about. And then um, uh, uh, you know, a little bit about integration with Neutron, a few uh, metrics about hydrogen. Um, and something about what's next, it, which is helium. So we don't have, we don't have the alphabetical order releases like w OpenStack has. We have something that is like following the periodic table. So it's going to go, it's going to go hydrogen, helium, lithium, you know. So check out the periodic table. You can find the names of the next releases um, and what's in the queue. So with that, what is it? So. Open Daylight, you guys know what it is, apparently. Basically, it's, a, a, it's an SDN. We're trying to build an SDN ecosystem. Platform, um, robust code, extensible, open source, all of those good things. Um, get the industry to accept it um, as, a, as a sort of a standardized platform that people can not only use as open source um, components, but to build into their products. So an example of where that was really worked well is in, in Open vSwitch, right? A lot of products are, are, are based on Open vSwitch, and now Open OpenStack as well. And then we wanted, you know, we wanted to build a community because, as I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but you know, one of the things I've learned over the years is that you know, without community, you really have, you know, a very diminished um, kind of project. And I'll show you where we think that the community members can, you know, add or subtract value. Um, so, as I said, it's a SDN platform, how many people know what SDN is supposed to be? I mean, you know, the actual, actual definition of SDN seems kind of elusive, you know? I mean, you can, it's, it's you, you get as many definitions as people you ask, but we're trying to kind of capture all of that. So it includes northbound um, abstractions that people can consume, REST and others, um, and also southbound, um, um, multi-southbound, so that's a little bit different than, say, some of the popular SDN controllers that are out there right now, like Floodlight. Like Floodlight is an open flow SDN controller. We had in mind when we designed um, Open Daylight that there would be multiple southbounds. So there's open flow, there's NetConf, um, there's, there's um, BGP LS, a bunch of other ones. So, and it's designed for that. So, and then above that, above the, all of that infrastructure, we have applications that people have written against all of that. So, and as I said, whatever else we need to make it work, which turned out to be a lot more than we thought. But you know, there it goes. And so the architecture or project framework is sort of like this. Um, the idea is that the, the, there's a controller, which is really the core of the project. You can think of it sort of like the kernel, right? So you have to have a robust, rock-solid kernel um, or controller, if you like, uh, that allows um, that allows, that's extensible and allows people to build applications above and allows people to plug in new functionality below. So as you can see in this picture, um, this is kind of the canonical open daylight picture. 
Um, the idea here is that there are applications above. They talk through standard APIs that are the open daylight APIs. And those are like everyone out, like everything else, those are evolving as we're talking. But REST, REST comp, things like that. Um, and then the controller itself has network services inside it. It has like topology management and things like that that, you, that everybody needs if they're doing networking. Um, and platform services like uh, plugin managers and things like that. And then southbound, then there's a service abstraction layer called cell. There's actually two of them. One is the hard-coded cell, and then there's something called the MD cell or model-driven cell. The model-driven cell, the idea here is, it's really kind of a nice idea. The idea here is that you have Yang models that describe the southbound, and then you generate code that links the REST APIs uh, to the southbound plugin using a code generation based on Yang. So it's fully modular that way, and pretty nice. But it's also complicated. So, you know, and it, you know, that's shaking out right now. So, and then the southbound plugins are going to be things like OpenFlow, uh, I2RS in the fullness of time, and things like that. Um, and because unlike, unlike OpenStack, um, Open Daylight is under the Eclipse license. And the reason, one of the reasons for that is because we wanted to make it easy for people to bundle um, vendor specific um, plugins, notably southbound plugins. Um, and, and have them be able to, to bundle these into their products easily. So an example of that would be, I, I don't know if Cisco's going to do this, but it'd be like one PK southbound plugin would be a natural thing to kind of think about there, or something like that. And then there are data plane elements that, that we have been working against, both physical and virtual. So OVS, one of our projects is OVSDB, and there's also a lot of physical um, uh, switching infrastructure underneath it. So that's kind of what it's about. Um, now, who's, who's, who's in the game? Well, like all of these, like many of these open source projects, there's platinum, gold, and silver membership. And this list, I don't think it's complete. I mean, because of the flux and the number of people who are joining, uh, I think it's close, but not exact. So you can see who the platinum members are. Mo many of them were founding members of the, uh, of the project. And then we have a couple of gold members. and. Silver membership is growing pretty quickly. So there's a lot of diversity of vendors and others involved in the project. So what we did was, um, you know, we worked for about a year, and then recently, um, I'll show you this, but um, we, uh, we created a simultaneous release, and the idea behind the simultaneous release is that all of the projects that wanted to be bundled together um, had a, had a um, project uh, timetable in which they had to get in, and they were uh, <clears throat> all put together in a couple of different release vehicles, and we called that Hydrogen. Um, and it was supposed to be released on the 28th of January. The additions, or you can think of these as like release vehicles, <coughs> um, were base virtualization and service providers. So the idea was, and this didn't, this didn't actually work exactly the way we wanted it to, but the idea was there'd be a base edition. I'll show you a picture of this, but there'd be a base edition which had the basic functionality in it. And then since we had projects that were around virtualization and data, basically data center virtualization, we bundled those up together and made a virtualiza virtualization edition. And then likewise for service provider. And I'll show you what those look like. Um, Virtualization is where we did the OpenStack integration. And by the way, Kyle did a lot of that work, um, and it's unfortunate that he couldn't make it, but uh, he, you know, he did a lot of work on Neutron integration before um, he became a politician or whatever it is you are when you're a PTL. Running around talking to people, I guess, is what you do. By the way, that's sort of what it's like to be a, a chair of the TSC, too. You just run around and talk to people. You're, uh, your, your basic utility goes down or something like that. So, uh, so we had this nice simultaneous release plan and, you know, the typical things, milestones and release, release candidates and all of that stuff. And um, we were supposed to have the formal release on, uh, uh, you know, 12.9. That was our target last year, right? And, and we had all this and we're just going towards it. And, you know, when we got there, we found out that uh, uh, it didn't quite happen the way we wanted to. We, we did a little bit of learning. By the way, this is all, you can find all this stuff on wiki.opendaylight.org. It's all up there. So let's see. We didn't, make the, we didn't make the actual date, 
but what we did deliver were 15 projects in the simultaneous release. Um, it was kind of, this is kind of a, and this is still a live issue inside Open Daylight and, and inside OpenStack. OpenStack seems to have solved this a little bit, but the problem that you face when you, ha when you have a lot of projects that want to get in is that you have, it's basically the same thing that you have in any software development organization. It's sort of like you got to trade off features for stability. And we, I don't think we've really hit that, the, the sweet spot there yet. Um, we're working on that quite a bit. Um, OpenStack seems to have that kind of um, uh, at least well-defined with sort of the idea of core and ecosystem. So we had the simultaneous release. It was supposed to be on uh, December 9th, which apparently is the same as February 3rd. Um, but that's when we finally got it done and finally had artifacts that we put up. And so that was cool. Um, and everybody was pretty much really happy about that. And it was done right before the Open Daylight Summit, the first one we ha had. And it was really, there's a lot of energy around it. It was really quite exciting. It's sort of like here, a lot of energy around everything. So, but in the process, we learned a lot of stuff. And, and not enough to make it go smoothly yet, but we learned a lot. So the first thing is, um, we had a kind of an impressive list of projects in there. And some people might say, well, that's too many because you didn't trade off cr properly against stability against, um, you, know, you know, features versus stability again, same thing. But the projects were the controller, of course, that's like the kernel, as I said. VTN is uh, virtual tenant networking. Uh, that was a project um, came from NEC. OpenDove came from IBM. Affinity Management Service, that came from Plexi. Lisp mapping, that came from Context Stream. That was kind of interesting. They were not actually a member. And there was a big, a lot of confusion early on with Open Daylight whether or not you could contribute code or be part of it if you weren't a member. And of course, it's an open source project, so you can. Membership's about funding it, uh, governance, and all of that stuff. But to be part of it, to be a developer, even to get on the TSC, and for that matter, to get on the board, you don't have to be a member. Um, so, that was uh, list mapping. Uh, how many people know what Lisp is? You know, locator ID separation protocol. This is something that Dino and I did when we were at Cisco, but the context stream guys picked it up for uh, sort of an NFV style uh, service chaining application. Yang Tools was part of the Yang infrastructure that we used. Remember, I said that the MD cell was the model driven cell had used Yang very heavily to generate code and uh, both northbound and southbound. We split that off as its own project, all the Yang parts of that, which were substantial. It uses a lot of modeling. Defense for All, that's a, that's a security um, uh, a application. Uh, BGP LS and PSEP, that's, that's kind of a service provider traffic engineering thing. OpenFlow and OpenFlow plugins, of course, are OpenFlow. OS, OVSDB um, was, is something that's do, being done by the Red Hat folks, although when it started, interestingly enough, um, it was uh, some folks at Cisco, Madhu, and Brant Salisbury, who was at the time at, at U Kentucky and now is at Red Hat. Um, SNMP for SDN is kind of an interesting thing. There were some folks in, at ITRI, which is a kind of a research institute in Korea, where they had switching infrastructure, but for some reason, they couldn't develop on the, on the switch platform itself, so they had SNMP. They wanted to see if they could use this control infrastructure to do flow programming on uh, using S SNMP, and that's what this does. Um, Deluxe is a UI, um, and uh, system testing and integration, we made its own proje project because that's a, just a gigantic thing. So that's kind of the projects that were in there. That's kind of a lot a lot of different things that were in, in there. Now, how did, we, how did we wrap it all up? How did we build these release vehicles? So this is the, another one of these canonical pictures that we, that we always all use. So these are all the components kind of wrapped up into everything, right? And I'll show you how they, how they, um, how they uh, uh, break up into the different releases, but this is kind of the picture of everything together. So, there's, so as you can see, there's the controller and its different components. <coughs> And then in the blue layer underneath it, those are sort of all the southbound plugins. And then above, it, above the um, API, REST API that they're showing there are all the things that are applications. So let's see how they, how they fit together. So this was the base edition. We kind of figured that, you know, 
the basic thing that you needed was netconf because you got you gonna you need some way to configure the devices and then openflow because most of the controllers out there were openflow only and we wanted to have that capability so the idea is you had the base edition then you'd add stuff to that to make virtualization and service provider so that was the idea so what did service provider add well it added um, inside the controller oh by the way this the, it's the controller's written in Java, and it uses OGSI, OSGI extensively, right? So where you see the affinity service and the list service kind of outlined in yellow inside the controller, that's where they added OSGI bundles to give the controller additional functionality to support their application. So it'd be like you had a KLM or something like that, except for it's OSGI in this case. So we added the uh, list. Affinity service, which I'm sorry, the affinity service and the Lisp service, which both of which added um, functionality to the controller again through this through OSGI bundles, and then on the southbound we had SNMP, BGP LS, PSEP, and Lisp, and um, then above that we had the uh, DOS DDoS protection thing that came from um, Defense for All. By the way, stop me if anybody has a question. This is more. So the, so the virtualization edition added OVSDB uh, as a southbound. How many people know what OVSDB is? Okay, way to configure o and talk to o OVS. Um, and then it, we also put the affinity service, OpenStack, so this is where OpenStack integration came in, Make, makes kind of sense, um, and VTN manager and Dove manager. So VTN and Dove uh, were different ways of doing data center virtu multi-tenant virtualization, one coming from NEC, one coming from IBM. Now, I'll just say right up front, these things didn't play nicely together. They all, VTN and Dove wanted to, wanted to talk directly to the switching infrastructure, and there, there is not an abstraction in here that sits between those. Affinity could have been that, but the, but the Plexi folks just didn't get to it. And, uh, you know, we, we talk, we've been talking to them about that Affinity the Affinity metadata service is kind of an interesting, actually an abstraction layer. So the way it looks, it's drawn here is actually the way it's bundled. But actually, VTN and Dove could run over Affinity, but we just didn't get there. And then at the application layer, we had this VTN coordinator, which took advantage of the VTN manager that, again, was an OSGI bundle that got loaded up into the controller. We had the DDoS uh, protection stuff. And then we had OpenStack Neutron which was the interesting part for this. So how did that work? How did OpenStack Neutron work? So Open Daylight, it's, it, you know, the reality is it's a pass-through, right? Because what we wanted to do is allow OpenStack to talk directly to uh, the Open Daylight controller and then um, expose those APIs. So basically what it does is it, it, it exposes a single common um, OpenStack service northbound, so on the top of the controller, right? By the way, we have this terminology northbound and southbound, so you can think of the controller in the middle. Northbound is on top, you know, this is where applications use REST APIs to talk to the controller, and southbound we have what are basically protocol plugins. The problem with the terminology is north and south is kind of relative to where you are, you know, is it east and west, up or down, left or right? The terminology is not very good, but that's what we're using right now. So. Um, so the API that exposes, uh, that we expose, just matches Neutron directly, and that's why I was saying it was kind of passing it through. Um, and there's multiple implementation of Neutron networks inside uh, OpenStack itself. So the Open Daylight OpenStack plugin just passes through, which is, which is a good way to start because it just made the OpenStack plugin a lot simpler, and it pushes the complexity down into OpenStack. And then on the left, uh, I'm sorry, uh, down into Open Daylight. Um, so on the left here, you can see kind of what the picture is. So we use Neutron ML2 um, mechanism driver, and then it talked to REST APIs inside Open Daylight, and then Neutron service was inside there. So, and you know, that, it, it works fairly well. Um, the integration with VTN and Dove, again, is a little bit harder because they both want to control resources themselves directly, and there's not an abstraction layer that would allow them both to kind of do that independently. So you have to choose one, which is kind of not optimal, but that's one of the things we need to, we need to learn a little bit better or deal with. On the other hand, if you're just running OBS, OBS instances, it works very well. 
So what's the status of the integration? Um, ML2 driver got into Ice House, which is nice. Supports VXLAN and GRE. Um, there's nice dev stack support. It got merged upstream. And it basically, you can run out Open Daylight as a top-level service inside DevSec, which is really nice if you're, if you're using that. Um, Neutron API service is now in Open Daylight. So we made a lot of progress here. Um, and it, it provides a Neutron API, and you know, so there's multiple implementations it can handle. Um, and the initial ML2 uh, plugin fo focused mostly on the core Neutron functionality. Um, and still uses some older components, but it's moving pretty quickly. So where are we um, with this one? Our idea is we have a, quite a few updates planned for Helium. Remember, the release that we have now is called Hydrogen. Um, by the way, you know, when we get to Lithium and you know, beyond, Beryllium, Plutonium, I don't know how that's going to work out. You know, but it's what the community wanted. So we have uh, uh, various updates planned for uh, Helium and Juno, including um, plugging plug -in changes for stability improvements, which is one of the, again, this is one of the big struggles in open daylight right now is stability versus features. Um, and we want to be able to notify uh, from ODL to the mechanism driver once ODL has set up the host, the port on the host. We can't do that right now. Security groups implemented with open flow rules. That's kind of a logical thing that you might want to do. Um, L3 routing handled by open daylight. Don't do that. It removes the need for the L3 agent, which we want to get rid of that. And uh, uh, the obvious is anything else that comes up, plus you know, fixing all the bugs that are in this thing. So a lot of this work was done by Kyle. Kind of sorry he's not here. He could talk a lot more about the, what was interesting to him in that. But, uh, it, you know, we, we, we made a lot of progress against this. So we have a lot of open stack utilization of open daylight. And actually, it's, the integration really demonstrated something that we wanted to kind of work on a little bit, which is what is the relationship between open stack and open daylight, right? And so open daylight's intended to be kind of a control platform that would sit underneath open, open stack, but exactly how? It's kind of like people waving their hands a lot about, yeah, that sounds good. A lot of PowerPoint pictures, but now we have this, so it's, it, it's much better than PowerPoint. Uh, let's see. Um, so that's where we're at with the integration, but we learned a lot about just doing open source in the process of this. How many people have been in the open source community for you know two years or longer? OK, not everybody. You guys are mostly like me. I, I, I'm kind of new to the open source community. And so here's what I learned. Let's see. Oh, I wrote a blog on it. Down, I don't, I, I'm sure you guys can get these slides at the end of this. And if not, I'll just send me an email and I'll send them to you. But the first thing I learned was that community building is, the core, is a core objective. And in fact, the idea that you could do innovation through collaboration is extremely powerful. And if you didn't know that, um, you could just look outside the doors there and kind of get the, the idea, you know? So building a community around open daylight and, how, and, and integrating with the open stack community is core objective. Because, you know, by, by the way, if you don't have that, you might have a nominal open source project, but it's not leveraging what's interesting about open source. So the idea that you'd slap a, a, some kind of open source language uh, license on your code and put it up on GitHub doesn't make it open source in that deep way. Uh, Code is going into the realm. So I'm sitting on the TSC call and I'm going, wow, you know, nobody cares about anything but code here. And that is a key thing. And in fact, um, when um, the, uh, the hydrogen release happened, right just immediately prior to the um, Open Daylight Summit, wow, it's really tough to keep open stack and open daylight straight here up here. Um, uh, the Linux Foundation had this idea that what they would do is they would build, build these challenge coins. They're kind of like military challenge coins. So everybody who was a committer to hydrogen, the hydrogen release got one of these coins. And the coin, I wish I could kind of show it to you a little bit, but it's kind of a cool like thing, you know? And, and so everybody got one who was a committer because code is coin of the realm. Coin. And then Engineering systems, um, this is Madhu uh, hanging out in his Google Hangout while they were doing OS, OVSD 
DB development. The engineering systems that we were that we were using were so sophisticated in terms, but just basically open source or open source like tools, um, and they were. And it turned out that those tools were as almost important as the artifacts that we were building. And, the, and by that, I mean engineering systems. By, by that, I mean tool chains as well as how we communicate, IRC, all of those other things. And there's kind of, a, there's, there's kind of something like if you, if you follow this down to the logical conclusion of this, you kind of learn something. And this is kind of what I learned. And by the way, well, here, here's the thing. Engineering artifacts aren't the thing that is the source of sustainable advantage or, in, or, or um, innovation anymore. And you know, working in a vendor that makes things, that's not a popular statement. <coughs> um, but what is important is what I said earlier is the engineering systems, the culture, and the people and processes. And the open source thing really embodies this. <coughs> Excuse me. If you c compile this down one more time, you get this. What you build is not really as important as how you build it. And that, I heard, this, I heard this in a different way yesterday or the day before. Maybe it was yesterday. <coughs> when the, in the keynote, the guy was talking about the good, cheap, and fast triangle. Um, and what he said was, if that's morphed into fast, fast, and fast, because you can build good and you can build feet, uh, cheap out of fast. That's the same thing. It's, it's a corollary of this. So I'm, in, so I'm talking to some people uh, in China about this, and they were saying, well, you know, open daylight's pretty unstable. Um, when are we going to be able to use it? And I was thinking, how do I talk to them? It is, you know, by the way, it, it, it's getting a lot better, but it was like every other open source project of this scale. It's, there's, it's dynamic in the early days, right? Chaotic. So I was trying to explain it to some folks in China, and here's what I came up with. Tell me if you, if you can grok this. So. I was trying to make an analogy to the early solar system. So in the early solar system, you know, everything's chaotic. You know, people are trying to get their code in. Um, rocks are flying around, everything. Um, and and the, uh, anything with enough, you know, anything with enough gravity, you know, people like enough, uh, starts to, you know, collide with one another. And we just saw this in open daylight. And in fact, everything is fluid and molten like the Earth in the early days, asteroids blasting into everything, epic collisions. That's what happens in the early days of open source. But in the end of it, you got a really nice blue planet that we like, or the Linux kernel, or OpenStack. <coughs> so you got to kind of, um, you got to kind of, uh, you know, wait that out a little bit in the early days of this. Let's see, how am I doing on time? Let me give you a few metrics from uh, Open Daylight so you can get an idea of, uh, uh, from hydrogen so you can get an idea of how it happened. Um, in the early days, we had a couple, only a few projects. At the end, we had 16 projects, what I, as I mentioned. And when I made this slide, there were seven new projects, but now there are more. Um, so Open Daylight had, you know, quite a bit of code in it, and it broke down like this. It was, it, it's written in Java, so of course it's mostly Java. The C++ stuff is really um, external in some ways. They're like proxies. So you build, a, you build some chunk of blob of this thing over here, and then you put a plug-in, southbound plug-in, and open daylight to talk to this, whatever this other thing is, and then it proxies the service. Some C, some Python. So this is um, something that's kind of interesting. And again, this is the stability versus features thing. There are 1.5 million lines of code, or 1.05 million lines of code in hydrogen. That seems like quite a bit. But the comparison that's being trying to make is that, you know, OpenStack took quite a bit longer to get to that scale. Now, is that good or bad? A lot of people are going to say that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence. And again, it's the same trade-off. I think we looked at this a little bit, but the project itself has growing membership. You know, it's up and to the right. Oh, okay. Sorry about the animation here. I don't like that. So what's in Helium? Okay, so here's the Helium um, simultaneous release plan. So we think we're going to have um, Helium, you know, out on this time schedule. Um, and as I said earlier, hydrogen 
well, you know, didn't quite make it. But you can find all of this stuff on the wiki. Just look for it. Just go to wiki.opendaylight.org and you'll see this release plan there. But so far, we're moving along pretty, pretty uh, on cadence. We want to get on, you know, we want to get on a cadence like OpenStack has, like maybe every six months or so. And we want it to be deterministic because developers need that determinism to figure out when do I have to be ready to go into the simultaneous release? When, you know, when, when do I have to hit all these milestones? So we want to get on a, a, a more deterministic cadence that's about six months. So in the queue, there's all kinds of stuff in there. And now you might argue uh, that's a lot of stuff, and it is. Some of these things um, aren't aren't in the incubation yet, that there's, gotcha, proposed projects. So application policy plugin is something that came from Cisco. Um, it's, I think it got renamed to group-based group policy. So it's a group-based policy. Um, then there are all a bunch of other projects here that people uh, have proposed. Oh, the pack, packet cable PCMM manager, that one did make it through incubation, and I'll show you that in a second. And some of these other ones are kind of interesting. Somebody wants to do uh, a simulator on top of uh, open daylight. There's data persistence. We don't we don't have good we don't have good um, uh, data store models yet. It, the original controller used something called an InfiniSpan, which is a which is fine if you're doing um, if you're doing database like and transactional like operations, but networking doesn't really really likes to see what's called eventual consistency more than strong consistency. Oops. OK. So there are a few really interesting ones that are, that are coming up. So this first one, uh, SDNI, SDNI I, really, I really, I think this one's kind of interesting because what they're trying to do is do, so now here, we, you know, what's east and what's west, but, you know, confederation. It's about confederation. And they, they intend to use BGP to do this as a first cut. Um, Open Contrail, um, they have a plugin that actually uh, you can talk Open Contrail southbound. They're a protocol southbound, so you, you could use the northbound Neutron, um, plug, Neutron interface for Open Daylight to talk to Contrail. Um, there's some subscriber awareness stuff. People are updating the L2 switching infrastructure. Um, secure network bootstrapping infrastructure. People are trying to figure out how do I get these switches and controllers to trust one another. That's, by the way, that issue is completely ignored in, in most of the SDN uh, implementation and literature. AAA, there's no AAA service in SDN. We're trying to get that. Service function chaining, well, everybody wants that. Um, uh, so what, what has actually been through to incubation this application policy plugin thing, which is actually now renamed group-based policy. Uh, there's a toolkit um, that has various different things that you need just to, just to support dev development. Um, documentation has actually become a project. So Open Daylight was kind of, let me put it this way, slim on documentation. Uh, <laughs> uh, dynamic resource reservation. Um, negotiable data path models is kind of interesting. This is. Um, TTPs, um, table typing patterns from the ONF. So this is a way of telling flexible switching infrastructure how to, how to arrange the tables in the switch. Um, root parent was about how to do better release management. And OpFlex is, is, a, is, is kind of a policy-based uh, protocol that came from Cisco as well. So those are, we have all those in incubation. And I, all of those, I, I anticipate, are going to go into Helium. And just in case you're wondering, one of the things I did, um, and I don't know, actually know how this works in OpenStack, but one of the things I did when I first got on the TSC um, and became the chair of the TSC is I opened up the TSC calls to anybody who wants to be on them and, and the mailing list. Because I was really not um, a big fan of the way, say, the IES, IESG operates in the IETF. It's sort of a star chamber a little bit. You don't know what they're doing, how they make their decisions. This is an open source project. There's nothing that's secret in here. So, if you get on the um, wiki, uh, wiki.opendaylight.org and scroll down to where it says TSC page or something, if you click on there, there's the whole WebEx information. Um, when, what the WebEx is, where the IRC channels are, and all of that. And tomorrow, um, what we, this is the agenda I have for tomorrow. And what we're going to do is mostly about creation reviews, because 
you have to do a creation review before you can get into the simultaneous release. And tomorrow's the last day to do that. So these four projects are, are up for tomorrow, and that will probably take most of our time. Um, so please join if you want to listen to what's going on. Or you have, by the way, you can talk, too. I don't restrict the discussion to, OK, I'm down to, I'm down to like two minutes or whatever. I don't ever restrict the discussion to only the TSC members. And we have m many people in the community who, who are just active on those calls, and they're not TSC members. So if you like it, if you like, please come along and come along for a ride. Let me just say a few things. There's some quasi-technical things. We got to continue to build community. That's, that's really important. Um, we have the code quality and, and, and coverage, you know, stability, performance, bug fixes. You know, we really need that. And again, I'm not really sure how that gets handled in OpenStack. I know that, I know that Icehouse, at least in the case of Neutron, really focused on this, really focused on stability and performance and bug coverage. So we have to do that. Uh, distributed systems, we don't have that nailed down. We, like I said, we have InfiniSpan, but we're looking at ACA. Staffing, well, release engineering. We don't have a, actually a release engineer. Documentation. Uh, engineering systems, the Linux Foundation supports us. Uh, Andrew uh, is really great. We need fewer humans in the loop. When we did the last release, it was way too manual. It wasn't automated enough, and that had to do with the fact that we botched up uh, a, little, a little bit of the uh, numbering of things. And basically, we need more code that writes code in the, in the project. Fewer humans, more automation. Not that I don't like the humans. We've got a lot of nice humans. Yeah, and of course, you know, sustaining engineering is always a problem, right? The, you know, nobody wants to fix bugs. There's millions of bugs. Performance and scalability, code quality, and new projects. And I think I'm out of time. That's that. <laughs> by the way, by the way, if, if you if you have any questions about it, if you open daylight, if you wanna if you wanna come along and play, you wanna do do some integration with OpenStack. There's plenty of people, you know. Talk to me. Send. There's plenty of lists that you can join. There's plenty of IRCs. Come along for the ride. <laughs>